today we will talk about the stability and instabilities in stars at least about few of them now you know that uh, in our last several lectures we have discussed about various stellar models right and you also know that they are valid for equilibrium states However, remember that equilibrium is not the same as stability. They are different. T take an example. You see a pencil balanced on its point is also in equilibrium. But is it stable? Suppose you give it a small push, then what will happen? It will just fall down. Okay. So it is not stable against small perturbation. And so we have to consider when our equilibrium solutions are stable. So what we need to do is consider when our <coughs> equilibrium solutions from the stellar models basically are also stable against small perturbations okay now you see the very basic most basic equilibrium which comes to our mind is thermal stability basically stability in terms of thermal scenario let me just a little bit clarify so thermal stability that the first thing we will talk you you remember that a star which is in hydrostatic equilibrium it is stable now why it is so this is because of the temperature dependence of the nuclear reaction rate and the equation of the state so let me again write this down so star in he stable and i am saying that the reasons are t dependence of nuclear reaction rate number 1 and number 2 it is the equation of state of ideal gas so let us clarify this first now suppose our equation of state is of this form p gas is of this form rho to the power a and t to the power b okay now what will happen is that you see suppose the luminosity increases now wh when does luminosity increase luminosity is basically due to nuclear burning processes Right, so suppose the luminosity of the star increases. Now, this leads to an increase in temperature. Right? Okay. Now, this causes an increase in pressure. Why? Look at the equation of state form. It depends on the temperatures, some power. And if the pressure increases, then what happens is that your gas expands fine then what happens now when the gas expands it does work on the surrounding star okay and this causes the gas to expand and cool due to work on surrounding star so expands and cools now what happens because of this cooling is temperature decreases right and so the nuclear energy generation rate decreases and this causes what a decrease in the luminosity 
so the initial increase in luminosity was actually due to increase in your nuclear energy generation rate so this was the beginning point and you see from this entire step what we get is finally this state ultimately lumino uh, energy generation rate decreasing or luminosity decreasing so we are getting a sort of stability scenario okay and so the luminosity comes back is lowered down and this causes the equilibrium and this is known as your thermal equilibrium okay or basically thermal stability and this is understood through this following chain of events which i have uh, written down over here in very short okay so what we observe is that any small perturbations in nuclear generation rate or luminosity will result in change in again nuclear generation rate that restores equilibrium okay so this is what we have now we cannot do anything regarding the temperature dependence of the nuclear reaction rate right? this will always be there so for say for example for pp chain it is nuclear energy generation rate is proportional to t to the power 4 for cno cycle t to the power 19 or so we cannot do anything about it but regarding the equation of state suppose this equation of state changes so that you see there are two fa important factors here there is another thing which is the composition i'm not writing it down here but it also has very important effect Any anyway now look into here suppose the equation of state changes such that t becomes zero i mean t becomes absent or b is equal to just zero is it possible what do you think come on we have talked about degenerate matter where in the equation of state for both non-relativistic ultra relativistic cases and in general also the temperature is absent so it is possible right so this means that if we have a degenerate gas the equation of state will be de different let's see what happens over there so let's see okay so as i was saying if the gas is degenerate then gas pressure is basically given by your let me talk about non-relativistic part only so if it is non-relativistic then it is of the order of 5 pi 3 and if it is ultra relativistic case then this is of the order of 4 by 3 now we will talk about this only for the time being and so you see that this gas pressure is independent of temperature this is the morale so what happens as that now you see an increase so in this case when the gas is degenerate an increase in luminosity due to nuclear processes or l basically l let me not write it now you might consider that you might get confused so an increase in luminosity will not result in an increase in pressure even though the temperature increases okay so what you see is that luminosity's increase does not increases the pressure now to get a better understanding of this effect let us consider a homologous change 
homo logos change in star so what we mean is that in time dt a shell of radius r right is displaced to radius r plus dr or basically r into 1 plus x dt right while x is some constant so all the layers of this star basically this means that all layers of the star increase in size with the same proportion okay so what it implies is that so this means r dot by r is equal to del ln r by del t is equal to x and since x is constant throughout the star as x is constant throughout star so what we have is this del del m of del ln r del t is equal to 0 and as a result and so we can write del del t of del ln r del m is equal to del del t of 1 by r del r del m this is again equal to del del t of you see what is this you remember the equation of continuity so let me use this and i will just have this result 1 by 4 by 3 r cube into rho right and this gives me again 1 by 4 pi r cube into rho minus 3 r dot by r minus rho dot by rho okay and this whole thing has to be zero so you see what we have done i have interchanged the two of them over here the two derivatives and i have seen the effect in this part and so this must be identically equal to zero and as a result of this what we get is this thing so this thing should be equal to zero and this gives me basically rho dot by rho is equal to minus 3 r dot by r now from the equation of hydrostatic equilibrium you remember what we have is basically p is equal to so from h e so the previous argument gives us this and from hydrostatic equilibrium we have h e is equal to 0 to m g m by 4 pi r to the power 4 4 pi r to the power 4 dm and so this gives me p dot is equal to again 0 to m del del t of 1 by r to the power 4 gm by 4 pi into dm this is equal to 0 to m minus r dot by r gm by 4 pi r to the power 4 dm and the result is minus 4 
R dot by R into P. So let us now combine this relation say A and this relation say B and on combining these two we will get using A and B you see what we have is this relation P dot by P is equal to 4 by 3 rho dot by rho or basically this means that dp by p is equal to 4 by 3 d rho by rho okay now we can look at a variety of equations of state so we can let's have a look so suppose p is equal to some constant p0 into rho to the power a into t to the power b where your a and b are positive constants right then from this above relation you see we can write dp by p no this above relation uh, i am going to use but let me first write dp by p so i can write it as d rho by rho plus b dt by t oh, just a second uh, dt by t okay and as a result of this above relation we have so this and your above relation I will have this relation you see 4 by 3 minus a d rho by rho is equal to b dt by t and this is very important this relation this is a very important relation okay let me again write it down and then we will discuss so the relation is basically 4 by 3 minus a into d rho by rho is equal to b dt by t right now you see as long as a is less than 4 by 3 what will happen is that then an increase in density due to contraction leads to leads to an increase in temperature okay now this is the case for our ideal gas right because you see for ideal gas we have a is equal to b is equal to 1 however for degenerate gas you see we have a is greater than or equal to 4 by 3 both relativistic and ultra relativistic cases I am talking about and B is actually much much less than 1 and what happens is that the pressure is determined by pressure determined by density uh, electron alone right and an expansion would result in a slight increase in temperature so this means that expansion result in slight increase of temperature now this is usually applied to the core of a star so that if the temperature increase 
leads to an increase in luminosity then that density will further decrease leading to an increasing temperature okay let me again write this down so i have uh, just talked to you about the degenerate gas where a is much much greater uh, than 4 greater than or equal to 4 by 3 and b is much much less than 1 and we also saw that the pressure is basically determined by density of the electron alone and expansion leads to slight increase in temperature right now this is usually applied to core of star so that if temperature sorry single if <coughs> so that if temperature increases then lead, this leads to an increase in luminosity and the density will further decrease okay leading to an increase in temperature so what is this unstable this is a very unstable scenario okay and this will continue until so continues until temperature is so high and density so low that degeneracy is lifted it is gone and then your ideal gas scenario will come okay and so this is your thermal instability okay sorry <clears throat> thermal instability now connected with this idea of thermal instability is another concept of instability which is known as thin shell instability okay now this occurs when nuclear burning happens in a spherical shell and this can happen when nuclear nuclear fuel has been exhausted in the core so this happens when nuclear fuel is exhausted in core but temperatures are high enough outside of core for fusion to continue in a layer surrounding the core okay so let me now uh, discuss this so for that let me draw a diagram first okay so you can see here i have shown uh, the nuclear burning thin shell configuration basically you can see in this diagram the configuration prior to the expansion which is on the left side and the configuration of the shell after expansion right now if the temperature increases after expansion then the nuclear burning rate will increase causing the expansion to continue see over here so to start with basically 
we have considered a thin shell of mass delta m right temperature t and density rho now the shell lies between a fixed inner boundary r0 over here which is basically generally set by the core you can think that this is basically your core and an outer boundary r this is the outer boundary r such that you see l is equal to r minus r0 this length scale this length scale this is much much less than r0 now this is basically so this means we are considering a thin shell so this is what we mean now if the shell is in thermal equilibrium then the rate of nuclear energy generation within the shell so in thermal if the shell in thermal equilibrium then the rate of nuclear energy generation in the shell which is q into delta m this must be equal to the net rate of heat flow out of the shell net rate of heat flow outside out of shell okay now you see if q increases then the shell will expand right and this is what i have shown over here on the right side and lift the layers above it everything all the other layers are also lifted now this in turn will result in a decrease in pressure now depending upon the thickness of the shell this much and the equation of state of the gas this can result in an instability okay so let's go into the mathematical details of this now we have seen that hydrostatic equilibrium requires we have seen previously this thing this relation dp by p is equal to minus 4 dr by r this we have seen also note that the mass of the thin shell delta m is basically 4 pi r0 square l into rho mass of thin shell is this right <clears throat> and as a result of this we have d rho by rho is equal to minus del L by L. Now note that DL is equal to DR and so as a result what we have is this relation D rho by rho we can write is basically minus DR by L I am replacing this by dr and this is equal to minus dr by r into r by l. Okay, now I have written it like this so that I will now introduce this relation over here. I will now put it over here and let's see what the result is. The result is the following. We get dp by p is equal to 4 L by R D rho by rho. Again, let me consider the general equation of state. So, of the form of P is equal to P0 rho to the power A T to the power B. If we do that, then we will see from this relation what we get is this relation 4 L by R minus A D rho by rho is equal to B DT by T okay <clears throat> this is again an instability in thin shells 
which we are considering right now okay so you see in this case of thin shell thermal stability requires a be less than 4 l by r this is different to the previous condition so as we can see sufficiently thin shell can always violate this condition for any value of a right at which point on expanding the shell will result in an increase in temperature so thin shell can violate this condition for any value of a right and as a result what will happen is that expansion results in increasing temperature which causes an increase in the energy generation rate okay the expansion will again continue until l becomes large enough for the stability condition to be met so this expansion will continue until 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 this l becomes large enough for stability condition this l becomes large for stability condition to be met okay so we have discussed the important two very important instabilities thermal and thin shell instability okay now let us just consider an example again suppose a shell of hydrogen is burning around a helium core of course of some radius say radius is r now if gas is ideal if the gas is your ideal gas suppose let us assume it to be ideal gas then the question is is there any minimum outer radius of this shell if hydrogen burning is stable so if your gas is ideal gas what is the minimum outer radius of this shell if the hydrogen burning is stable okay and the, we can also think that there is another important part is that is there any minimum outer radius if the gas is non-relativistic degenerate gas so what is the minimum outer radius if the gas is a non-relativistic degenerate gas okay so you remember now for ideal gas you remember the pressure form here a is equal to one and so the minimum and as a result minimum thickness of shell is how much is just 4 l is equal to r and as a result the outer radius of shell is 5 r by 4 okay however if the gas is non-degenerate so 
suppose the gas is no not non degenerate but non relativistic degenerate gas then in this case we have a is equal to 5 by 3 and so the minimum thickness minimum thickness condition will be met when 4L is equal to 5R by 3. This gives me L is equal to 5R by 12. And so outer radius of shell is 17 by 12R. So this is basically 1.25 R and this is basically 1.42 R. So this is somewhat greater than your ideal gas case. Now before I conclude it is important to note that significant variations of heat flux if as a result of variations of temperature can happen and this can alter our discussion how you see because a change in flux can also result sorry it can also result in increase in temperature right in a shell of star now in completely ionized gas F is much less sensitive to temperature than your nuclear energy generation rate Q is. However, instabilities can occur at temperatures near the ionization gases and fluctuations about thermal stable, uh, sorry, fluctuations about this stable thermal equilibrium points and unstable deviations from equilibrium occur on thermal scale, time scales. Thus, what happens is that these instabilities usually occur over millions of years. Okay, so that's it. Today we have discussed the only two instabilities, very important ones. Mm -hmm. Let me write it down, the last part for your comp. So what I was saying is that I have just talked about the fact that in completely ionized gas heat flux is much less sensitive to temperature than Q is. However, instabilities can occur at temperatures near ionization energies of constituent gas right and fluctuations about stable thermal equilibrium points and unstable deviations from equilibrium occur on thermal time scales and so these instabilities that we have discussed instabilities usually occur over millions of years.